Mamina, welcome. I'm glad you're here with me today. So you've got a diverse background and it's truly fascinating. It spans education, human resources and community services. And not only that, but also spirituality. I'm eager to jump into all of that and find out where your journey started. Hi, uh, Isabella. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank you uh, for having me in your uh, show. And uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunity and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And um, as you were talking about me, uh, I was just uh, uh, reminding, it was a flashback for me, like you have collected all the information about, about my experience so far. That's a good job to you. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so to start with uh, uh, my human resources, I did my master's in business administration with uh, human resources as specialization. Then I worked as, uh, started working with uh, human resources in multinational companies. And uh, during that tenure, actually I got married and then we moved from my country, India, to the uh, UAE, United Arab Emirates, you know. And there also I got good opportunity to work with the multinational company but side by side, I was a mother already. So uh, it was very difficult for me to uh, have uh, my feet on two boats, my motherhood and my career. So I was like stumbling a little bit and not very confident about uh, leaving my son in the daycare and going to work. And uh, one fine day, I just wake up to that and then I chose not to work anymore and to totally be a mother to experience the motherhood, right? So that happened. And then uh, I was at home. I used to take care of my son, everything at home. And then we moved from there to Canada. So thanks to my husband for that, uh, for this world tour <laughs> that we are doing and exploring until now. <laughs> So in Canada also, uh, since it was a new country for us, um, uh, it was a lot for us to manage because there was no help at home. Everything you have to do on your own. And uh, it was a big change because uh, we had to speak English most of the time when we are going outside. So my language preference also changed. So that was also a bit of adjustment. And uh Getting used to the weather was also a big adjustment because we were into minus 35 degrees, minus 40 degrees, you know, uh, and snow all around. I mean, uh, it felt like a fairy tale, you know, like uh, I just loved the snow and everything. So when I I still stayed at home and took care of my son, I used to drop him to school, pick him up. And uh, all that all through the day, I used to sit with my tea and enjoy the snow. So I enjoyed the weather in uh, Canada. And then when my son started to grow up and be independent, you know, by seven, eight, when he was eight years old, and we moved from one city of Canada to another city, Vancouver, British Columbia, there, that is where I started to actually find myself, you know, you let me know where to stop because I'm constantly talking. Carry on, carry on. This is interesting stuff. I mean, if you don't know where somebody came from and you don't understand their journey, I mean, there's no point telling us the ending, really. So carry on. <laughs> Thank you so much. So then actually, uh, I uh, consciously started to find myself, you know, of after getting married to eight years of my son, I completely lost myself. I didn't know where to start to look for myself, you know. Uh, so I started first leaving my house for my music class. I started to do music lessons. I mean, me personally learning because I love music. That is where I started to leave my home for two hours once a week. That was only on Sundays. That's it. And uh, there in the class, actually, I found myself, right, like, I felt joyful, my life was like again uh, blooming and um, I was happy and uh, um, I had uh, um, a different perception of my life altogether. So then I thought like, uh, okay, 
this is the right time maybe to do something. But I didn't want to get into my human resources. So I did my early childhood education there for one year. And then I started to work with, with the play schools and daycare. And I really loved my work. And um, then I kept working, uh, kept uh, getting experiences. And then um, my son was also uh, adjusted to my new uh, way of life, you know. So I was mentally okay uh, to give time to myself. And uh, from there, I actually consciously learned to take time out for me. And uh, I really wanted to work on myself. Uh, not neglecting anything, but with other things going on, I needed to take care of myself. That was the awareness and that was the enlightenment. So this is all about uh, my uh, early childhood education. And uh, when we moved to US, actually, uh, during the pandemic, we just moved to US in 2019 and uh, there was uh, COVID, right? So we stayed at home. My husband worked from home. My son was uh, taking his classes from home. That time, actually, I really uh, got into spirituality. I started to take uh, classes, temple classes. It's gone, the name you see. And then I started to chant. Uh, the mantra chanting, meditating, and uh, uh, I again found myself in a different way, you know, uh, that uh, liberated me in so many ways because uh, I had forgotten the way of self-talk. So spirituality has uh, given me that uh, path to talk to myself, to sit in silence and just listen to my mind or just observe my thoughts or just uh, chant and uh, make myself joyful with whatever the situation outside is. You know? So that was uh, a good thing that happened to me, I would say, uh, because uh, since we already left India, I had left touch with my friends. So with spirituality, I started to write my journal again and talk to myself, release my thoughts and emotions and everything. So that was a big part of life. And then... That thing stayed with me and it, it's there with me every day. I take my spirituality everywhere I go. It's not a religion, but it's a way of uh, living your life, you know, like to see with, um, I don't know how to uh, describe. It's like joyful. It, that brings joy to my life. And that's really that's good really because good. the journey that you've just shared is a journey that a lot of mums face. You know, they get, they have children, they get swept up in the corporate world or they have a job that they feel devoted to and then they lose themselves. And the arts are very, very underrated. I mean, whether it's music, art, dancing, you can find yourself through those avenues, but you can also find yourself through meditation, Kabbalah, chanting, like you said, and a lot of people in the West, they don't take this very seriously. And we do tend to allow negative self-talk to conquer everything. And then, you know, we forget about the real self, the real true self that we used to be when we were nine years old. And it's really good to talk to somebody that's had that east to west journey because a lot of us in the west we only have the west journey that's all we know so um how did you actually get into the um how do i say it you know it's not just spirituality that you do now but you you model everything into one your whole journey into one so how do you play out those various roles in your day-to-day -day life that's a very good question and there are a lot of challenges. I would not say that it's easy peasy. No, it's not. It's like uh, absolute uh, prioritizing, you know. So when I wake up in the morning, uh, I do my daily rituals like shower and prayer. And then I go to the kitchen. I start my day. I start cooking. And then uh, that is the first priority of my day. That's how my day begins. And the one thing that I learned from spirituality is... Uh, Whatever I do, I should be there, you know? Like, if I'm cooking, I'm cooking. I learned this very hard, but I learned it. 
and it is helping me uh, with a lot of tasks like task completion taking care of the time taking care of the uh, daily responsibilities so what's i've done with my cooking and everything and then uh, we are all having uh, breakfast and then everybody is going to their work right and then i'm away from home why does i leave home in my car i forget about my home i am no more thinking about of my home in the car i'm totally listening to some podcast or some uh, mindfulness uh, talking you know and i'm preparing myself for the day because i don't know how my day is going to be all i know is my about my being present in the situation mm-hmm. right and i am keeping myself open to that and i'm reminding myself like uh, i am not uh, getting into any conflict if i am getting into any conflict i am making sure i'm not arising that there will be conflicts of course there will be conflicts but i am not bringing that up if it comes up then i am ready present then i will see how the situation goes you know and then that comes the responsibility like what uh, what role i am playing there and what is the hierarchy there suppose i am in a school right uh, then there's a lot of hierarchy there the principal the psychologist the teacher the teacher assistant i'm just a therapist so just a therapist has to approach for me it's like i'm just a therapist and wow i'm just a therapist you know i'm unburdening everything right i'm like i'm just going i can only do my part and i'm going to do that to my best i'm just going to be present and see how it goes that's how i prepare myself for the day that's really interesting because a lot of fear um comes out of not being in the moment it comes out of the anticipation of future events based upon our p- past experiences so i say future uh, fear is false evidence appearing real so you know false evidence from the past is affecting our future and it, it, yes. nine times out of 10 it's absolute baloney it, none of those things that we think are going to happen actually happen so being in the present prevents you from worrying about what had happened or what could happen but then you mentioned about um being just a therapist nobody's just anything we all are on this planet for a purpose and a reason no matter what job we do whether we clean the streets or we fly to the moon and back we're all here for a purpose but this famous uh, sociologist max faber he talked about as being social actors on social stages and at any particular time we're called into action to be an actor so you could be a mother one minute a wife the next minute or a therapist the next minute and mindfulness helps us to actually separate them from each other and you seem to be a really good living example of that thank you so much but uh, what i feel what i have observed like how i want my day to be you know that is very important for me like if i'm conscious i have these reminders i am present i am going to be present with the moment with what is happening and i am going to participate moment by moment i am not planning i am not creating anything i am not doing nothing i am just there i'm witnessing i'm observing i'm present and i'm ready to face whatever is going to come and they're very they're very um confident words you've just said there so tell us a bit about your involvement with the mechanicsburg art center and iscon yes that's very right. i pronounce that right yes that's very correct yes you pronounced it right so art center uh, i started to do my art when i started to really get into meditation my art is an inspiration has shown me ways of living life to be patient to not plan anything because my art has no form not all of them has form so when i meditate i get the visuals and then i paint this is very very uh, uh individualistic approach this is how i do my art and uh, i have no inhibitions no expectations um no um nothing i need from 
or no approval I need from outside when I'm doing my art. Because my visual is so clear that I am just engaging with the colors and the canvas and my visuals. That's all. And I'm present. I'm just seeing my visual and I'm doing it. So once I started to do uh, my art, uh, I actually felt very good. I felt like uh, it's adding to my life, you know. It's it's adding joy to my life because I don't have any expectations. So then after uh, doing some uh, so many uh, arts, uh, someone suggested that why don't you um, uh, go into this art center and uh, see what is happening. Then I went to the art center and... Uh, they had exhibitions, they said, uh, we do exhibitions and uh, uh, you can put your uh, art over there or you can do exhibitions. So that's where I thought, um, okay, time to take it to the world. <laughs> time to take it to the world. And um, it's interesting because uh, you don't know how you are going to be accepted, you know, right? So it's again, uh, getting, um, keeping yourself open to the unknown. So drawing on your experience of being a behavioral therapist, uh, tell me what it's like being an early years educator. I love it. I love children anyways. I loved children all my life. So uh, this was something more uh, structured, I would say. So being a mother and being an early childhood educator is two different lenses, you know. But they are, again... Uh, mingled they are overlapped you know you need your nurturing quality to love the child and to see them as they are and uh, my motherhood has helped me with that and I can love each and every child that I'm working with not working with and uh, that is um, a blessing and uh, that is my strength I take love and faith with me when I'm going to work more than uh, my outfit, more than my makeup, more than my physical appearance. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me as much as my love and my faith matters. Because I have seen that uh, when I am stepping out of my house and I carry love with me, um, I am not uh, uh, afraid of, uh, I'm not w working from a state of insecurity. I am, I am aware that there will be people who will not like it. There will be people who will suggest. There will be people who will reject. And that is all fine. Because my perception is not the only perception. And I am not the only person who is working for the child. We have 10 different people working for the child. So all I need is love and patience. I go with that and then I work. And also... I work child-centered so that I follow the child and the child is like, not, for me, the mood of the child is very important. If the mood of the child is good, then you can do your work in five minutes. Will it be five minutes is more productive than getting engaged with the child throughout the three hours, running after the child, letting him not follow what he is doing. I don't well, personally like chaos when I'm working. Mm -hmm. Let the child lead. And then when I get time, we do some educational stuff. That's great. That's a great approach to education because all too many times we're left with children feeling like they need to belong to the system, be part of the system, be a cog in the system. Nine times out of ten, they just don't fit if they're um, if they're not non-academic. They may be sporty, they may be academic, they may be having problems at home, but just because they don't, fit into the system it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be cared for so it's a great job that you're doing there so thank you so much let's go back to your human resources experience and you obviously encountered some challenges there relating to employee health and productivity can you give us any examples of of those and how they differ from what you do now yes absolutely i mean uh with multinational culture, uh, it's very difficult to be um, empathic, empathetic and uh, be, um, uh, what do I say? How do I say that? Uh, it, you are emotional, but uh, it doesn't really matter if you are emotional. I mean, if you care, you don't care, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. 
employee health is okay in pen and paper, but when we are face to face with our words and uh, our intentions, it's a different story. It's a different story. Pen and paper and the person standing in front of me, they don't match. I have seen this mismatch for a long time. Like I had around uh, five, seven years of experience, but uh, always I used to get disheartened. Like uh, why they are talking like that? We can also talk like this. I mean, why it has to always be uh, in a disgusting manner? You know, we can be respectful. We can listen, talk, discuss. So we we are not here to war. We are here to solve some problems. We are working for. So, but that that intention is not there with everybody because everybody is in a rush. They have targets to do. They have this to do. They have this much of productivity to get. This there's a lot. So. For me, what I realized was like, uh, I was more becoming like a, a, someone is their guidelines and I'm following and not being myself. I don't have any scope of being myself. If I say something, then I'm just talking out of the system. So that is something I really uh, noticed about myself. And then I chose, like, uh, that helped me choose my motherhood more than my career. Because... Yeah. For me, if I'm not doing anything purposeful or anything that is not joyful to me, if I'm not having a joyful experience, joyful is not pleasant. It's like living in harmony, you know. If I'm always thinking about my job, oh my God, my day is not good. Why did I talk to that person? Why did he say me like that? What could I have done? I had those hangovers every day. But I am not like a person who will, who likes to, Keep going on with these hangovers, you know, these experiences. So that actually redirected me to choose my motherhood. And I was very happy about it because I can, I cannot change everything. I'm just one person in the earth. It's very hard for me to change. So instead, what I can do, where I like to work, I would like to work. Instead of following the system, I chose what I like and follow the system. <laughs> That's, that's great. So many more people should actually do that. I actually did that as well. So, you know. Um, Good for you. Okay. Um, so I'd like to ask you a question. And that is, I always ask people for five tips they can give um, people listening at home. So whether they're a, they're a mother or a father in um, a relationship, in a marriage with children, when they're feeling the constraints of work-life balance what are the five tips that you would give them that's a very good question I have personally uh, lived that so first I would like to uh, say that uh, uh, prioritizing your uh, life it's very important very very important and you don't do it from a state of ego or uh, uh, rush or you, you are racing or something. No, everything can be done, but in a joyful way, right? There are so many people managing their work, their home and everything. But you need to have the right attitude for that. You can do everything. You can do everything. Just pause, take a pause, take a pause. Plan your day, plan your day. Prioritize. If you are prioritizing your career, then you should know how to manage with your child. How to manage with your child. So you have to... Have that really very clear. And it is about both the parents. I will not say it is only one person. Of course, I can say that it is not 50-50. Sometimes it is a mother 70 and the father 30. But sometimes the father is 70 and the mother is 30. So you have to take that approach. You know, you cannot fixate on a person like, uh, oh my God, I'm, I'm doing 50. He also do does 50. That doesn't make sense because... Every time a person is not as productive as you are, you have your downtime, you have your, you, sometimes you are feeling low, sometimes they are feeling low, you know. So so if you can see each other with that uh, way, you know, that approach that I'm also a human being, I have responsibility. He is also a human being. He has his responsibility. We together have made this decision of having a child. You know? So it is both parents' responsibility. And also... I would like to say to not get very serious about life. I mean, we cannot plan our life. There's no guarantee that what we are planning that is going to happen. 
So just moment by moment, day by day, hour by hour, I would say, like, if, if you have a toddler and you know your child is going to take one hour to get ready, you need to get ready before that. You, as a mother, if you're taking responsibility of the first half of the day, then I would, I would really love the mothers to say, just joyfully wake up early, take care of yourself, first love yourself. Let you be ready for your child and your husband. Take time out for yourself. If you are not feeling loved by yourself, if you cannot love yourself, then it is going to not take you very long because you will have multiple breakdowns. Like You will realize later. You will not realize it immediately. But you will have breakdowns because you are just racing like a machine. And machines don't love Humans can love. We have that ability. We can do that. It's just, I would say, I always think about one day at a time. One work at a time. Even if you are multitasking, you know, like, you need to sleep for eight hours. You wanted to sleep for eight hours. But uh, if you sleep for seven hours, your day is sleep for seven hours. But sleep peacefully. With that acceptance, then I'm going to sleep seven hours. I'm going to sleep happy. And then I, if I wake up, then I'm going to do this, this, these things for my child, for my husband or for myself. So from a state of love, definitely from a state of love. That's great advice, great advice. So it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Um, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me in YouTube. I'm in Facebook, I'm in Instagram. Great. So I'll put all the links below the video and people can go and find you and find out more about what it is you do. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I had a great time talking to you. And um, I would like to also invite you to my podcast. No problem. Tell me when. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get in touch? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you.